Hello, everyone. I'm Brainerd Carey. This is Praxis Center for Aesthetics, and today I'm doing a talk on art fairs, the, the pros and cons of art fairs, and, uh, and how to work them. So art fairs uh, are, are a range. First, to define art fairs, there's everything from you know, Miami Basel, which is happening now, Basel being a fair that started in Basel and is this really high-end fair that moves around the world. Um, and then there's all the satellite fairs that are around something like Art Basel every year, meaning there's little fairs uh, to medium to large fairs that, that associate themselves with Art Basel because there's collectors there at that time. And then there's fairs that are things that you see now around Christmas time that are a mix between crap fairs and art, you know, artwork for sale. Right there, that's a big range. That's that's from you know the lowest price, like selling things matted, fifteen dollars each or two for twenty-five photographs or prints, up to you know Basel. But today I'm mostly going to talk about the art fairs that you can pay to be in, uh, the, the, the larger ones, the, the booths. I'll speak also about the other ones, but um, affordable art fair, art expo are two that travel around and are in New York. And uh, probably a lot of you have been tempted or have even had a booth in one of those fairs. So I want to talk a little bit about what that, what that means for most artists and what you can expect when you get a booth in one of those. Because it's, it, it, the, the big picture is it works for some artists and it doesn't work for other artists. And you kind of want to know whether you're one of those artists to begin with, right? Um, so if you take a fair like the Affordable Art Fair or rather Art Expo, you know, either, it's going to cost quite a bit to have a booth, um, usually anywhere from two or $3,000 depending on the size of the booth. Uh, very often what happens is you're, you're offered a portion of a booth or maybe there's another artist or someone that wants to split the booth with you. So to begin with, um, if you're about to pay money for a booth at any art fair, be really clear about the square footage you're getting because sometimes the walls are very flimsy. What looks like you'll have a lot of hanging space turns out to be not much because someone's using every square inch around your work kind of thing. Um, but let's say in the best scenario, you have, uh, you're splitting a booth with somebody or you have your own booth. And now you're part of an art fair. You've paid your two or $3,000. You have your, your painting, sculpture, whatever it is on the, on the walls of your booth. You've made it look nice. And you're sitting there waiting for sales to come in. Now, most fairs, like Art Expo, which is kind of what I'm thinking of now, um, there's many people like that, right? There's tons of artists in all the booths. The work tends to be... Um, inconsistent, right? You'll see some work that's great and some work that's not so interesting, right? Uh, there's, there's a huge range. And you'll also see people walking through the art fairs by just walking straight down the aisles, right? Looking both ways like that. Not even stopping. Um, some people, of course, do stop and look. So the question is, the pros and cons for an art fair really is, is, is that 2,000, 3,000, 1,500, whether it's a small street fair or a big fair, really worth spending, right? Well, first, you have to have plenty there to sell, right? So I would say if uh, your booth costs $1,000, you should have at least $5,000 worth of work to sell. Um, that's just... I would say the rule, kind of one to five, you know, um, even if you have something on the street, you, you, you need to have five times at least of what um, will make you break even. So if that booth costs you $100, you need $500 worth of material. And I mean $500 worth of earning potential for you uh, because you may just sell a few things. And, um, and when you sell about half of what you have, it's often hard for people to buy more. So that's just a tip in terms of the inventory, the amount of artwork you should bring to a booth. It's a lot. One to five, you know, minimum. In other words, if you spend a thousand, bring five thousand dollars worth of art. But ideally, uh, much more than that. The more you have in the booth, the better. It doesn't have to be hung all over the walls, but you have it right there uh, that you could pull out. If something sells and you give it to them, okay. So that's one rule of thumb right, to, to be sure you have enough with you. The other is um, to do something that separates you from the other booths. Now, um, in terms of like the right kind of art, right, well, what does that mean? Of course, there, you know, it's kind of meaningless. There isn't a right kind of art. Your art could suddenly be a hit. We don't know. But there was, I remember being at an affordable art fair once um, called the Affordable Art Fair, right? 
uh, visiting a friend who had a booth there, and she was saying how the guy next to her, who she also knew, couldn't sell enough of his paintings. He was making these landscapes of New York on canvas, uh, unstretched, and um, you know, outside outside the window of his hotel. And he went home and he was, was staying up all night making more landscapes, selling them for around 1200 each, just boom, boom, boom. He was selling like crazy without pushing too much. He was a kind of very extroverted guy, uh, very animated, had his own booth. So one tip is that um, as people are just walking down these aisles, right, um, you have to get their attention somehow. That guy was painting in his booth. He was finishing up work. He didn't intend it to be a performance or anything, but he was finishing up some of these landscapes that were still wet in his booth. Um, that attracted people. People are watching. He talks to people while he's painting. That's something you, you, you see more and more of, people painting in their booths in some way. So that draws people in. Then, of course, you have to talk to them. You're the salesperson. They don't sell themselves. You have to have a you know, something to take their cards, make it really easy. Uh, if you want to offer payment plans, offer payment plans. And they don't get the art till they finished it, but um, you have to really put on your sales hat. You have to put on not only your sales hat, but your, your marketing hat, because doing something like live painting and being extroverted and reaching out to people is how you'll make sales. Sitting there quietly, like reading a book or looking at your phone or something while people are zooming by, or even waiting and saying, hi, you know, any questions? Um, it requires more effort than that um, because of the volume of booths there and the, and the volume of, of people coming through. They get tired, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. You have to stand out. So, okay, pros and cons of art fairs from high-end ones like Basel, Scope, Satellite Fairs to ones that are, um, that are local fairs and, you know, Christmas fairs is be sure you, number one, have much more work there then um, then you need just to just to pay back your cost so again the ratio that I mentioned was if that booth cost you a hundred dollars you need at least five hundred dollars worth of work available for sale if that booth costs a thousand you need at least five thousand dollars worth of work for sale and ideally more ideally ten thousand but if you don't have that much you know don't let it stop you but there has to be enough for you to really make make back your money and make money and the other point that I was really making here in terms of the fares is, is knowing, making the calculation whether, um, whether you think you can sell your work at these kind of fairs. Ideally, go to the fair before and, and look at what's getting attention, what's selling. You can see people congregating around certain booths and, and not others. Um, it's up to you to decide whether you think you can sell work that way and, 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 and do that. But there are some things like at the Affordable Art Fair, images of New York, things that are geared towards tourists, which may very well be saleable. I don't think you should anyway be making work to fit a market, but I'm just saying some things will of course sell um, easier than others. There's no recipe, but that's just the fact, something you have to try out. And, and third, you have to be some kind of um, an extroverted salesperson at these fairs. I mean, use your own personality. You can be quirky, you can be, um, whoever you want to be, but it has to be someone who's, who's very proactive in terms of chatting, talking, maybe painting live. Um, but even if you're painting live, it has to be done in a way like almost out there in the, in the, in the, in the aisle. What he did was he brought an easel. He set up the easel kind of slightly outside his booth. It almost blocked traffic. So it wasn't like he was in the back of his booth painting. It was almost blocking traffic. You know, they tell him to move in. Okay, he moves it in a little bit. You know, he was, he was getting attention. So coming up with something like that is really helpful because you want to stand out from the crowd of all the people that are, that are there at these fairs. So those are my tips for today. Um, the pros and cons of, of art fairs and whether to be in them. Is, is, is really essentially just, do you think you can sell enough work to pay, get your money back and make some money? Um, and if you do, and you have enough work, you know, much more than the cost of the booth, and the booth isn't exorbitantly expensive, like $3,000, then go for it, you know? Ideally, check out the fair beforehand to see if you can see what's selling there. If you can't check out the fair beforehand, then um, an inexpensive uh, booth or table 
and um, and keep in mind all those ideas about about marketing, about talking, about being ready for for sales. Okay, so um, uh, for all of you who are, if anybody didn't see this whole talk, this is of course recorded and here for your um, listening pleasure. And afterwards, I'm going to answer all your questions. Um, right now in fact so let's let's get to that and if you guys also have other other suggestions for talks you want me to do for members here um, then please put to put those notes in there and I'll do them this came out of a request from a member um, to do a talk about the pros and cons of of art fairs so um, so uh, let's take your questions and I want to thank you all for being such um, wonderful members of this tribe supportive of each other which is hugely important it's great to see you know the questions and success and, and struggles that are coming through here, but also the fact that you guys are supporting each other is, I think, everything, really. It's, it's huge to this process. Okay, so do you guys have any questions at all? How can you find out what the other artists are that are selling at a particular fair? Who the other artists are? That's a good question. So Bill's saying, how do you find out who the other artists are that are selling at a particular fair? Sometimes you don't know. In different fairs, um, they're often listed. There's a little uh, catalog at the fair. They're often listed. Um, if you if you go on the website of a lot of places, they will show a map of the venue. And if it's a gallery-driven art fair, you'll see all the gallery names. If it's artist-driven, all artists with booths, um, you'll see the artist names usually or listed somewhere. So that's I guess the best way is website or their program when you go there. But even even better is is to just attend and check it out. Um, not as not as an artist selling a bill, but just as as an artist looking at the fair. It's worth paying the ten or fifteen bucks to get into the fair to just see what's happening there. Walk slowly, see if you can tell who's selling stuff, who's not, and you'll also be able to evaluate. Like, would you buy work from that artist? You know, walk through the whole fair as though you were a buyer. Um, potentially interested in work and and you'll notice things that that draw you in and things that that don't um and often it's it has something to do with it with with the type of work or the posture of the artist how their booth is set up so those things are, i think are all great to see um firsthand um so let's see uh yeah so you're welcome. So if anybody has any other questions, you can put them here and I will answer them. Um, again, I want to thank you guys for being part of the group and all the support that you give each other. And don't hesitate to uh, please put in more suggestions here for other, um, for other talks like this of any kind. And, uh, and we're going to be doing more studio visits soon. That was really successful. So that's upcoming. I'm just organizing that now. Um, hoping to bring curators in for those studio visits too. So lots of exciting things coming up for you guys and um, and in the holidays as well. So just started doing fairs. Carol said during the holiday season, actually some of the fairs have been very low traffic, but I have made money. Plus some of it is a good beginning. Your comments today help give me more ideas. Great. Okay, I'm so glad. Is, is a fair a place to pitch a gallery your work? Is a fair a place to pitch a gallery your work? Um, that's a good question. So is a fair a place to pitch gallery your work? And I'm glad to hear that, Carol. Um, I wish you, wish you luck with, with your sales. Um, and to the question of is a fair a good place to pitch a gallery? Typically, no, but it's okay to break the rules. Like if we're talking about Scope, Basel, all these fairs where there's all the gallerists are right there, often the gallerists right behind the booth. Um, if you get into a conversation about the work and you're enjoying it, ask for the gallerist's card and ask if you can follow up. You're an artist, and they'll say usually sure. Um, but at fairs, gallerists are paying usually a hefty sum for their booth, and they're trying to close some deals. So if you're talking to them for ten or fifteen minutes, and they see someone that walks by that looks like a collector that um that's past their booth because you're they're talking to you they'll be put off um and they're always aware of that constantly so generally i, I don't want to say there's a definite rule there but that's how they're thinking right because the booth costs so much money and they want to get the most out of it but also um in general you can of course talk to them you'll see if it's slow it's a slow time or 
or maybe one of them's in the front, but there's another gallerist in the back that you can talk to. Just feel it out. It could be a good time. It's certainly a good time to say, I really like the work you're showing here. Um, uh, I'd like to keep in touch with you. Can I have your card? I'm an artist. I'd like to send you work. Just leave it at that. Then collect cards, collect cards. Don't give cards, collect addresses bill and then and then follow up with them and you'll have something to really follow up with i saw you at the fair you were showing work by this this with this woman whose work i love and i wanted to send you some of my work you know may i um all right um so you're welcome everyone thanks so much um happy holidays as they're all coming up there's more talks coming up more studio visits coming up and again don't hesitate to please um suggest any topic you want me to speak on so I wish you all well, and um, have a great have a great week weekend. And um, again, don't hesitate to ask questions. And thank you all for being in this group, and thank you all especially for being so supportive of each other, which I think is um, is critical to to this process and um, and to the art world. Thank you, guys.